to get your calculator out? 3, 2B. Okay, we're going to do derivatives on our calculator today. Derivatives on calculator. Um, your homework is going to have some of this. What are you doing there? You're watching them and keeping an eye on them? Are they moving your desk around? Yeah. All right. Um, your homework tonight is going to have some review problems in it as well as uh, calculator stuff, okay? All right, so let's remember that in order to have to be differentiable, that means you have a derivative. Um, remember, you cannot have those four things, corner cusp, vertical tangent, or what was the other one? Discontinuity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and there's a theorem that I, I didn't mention that I might want to mention right now real quickly. The theorem says this. If f has a derivative... If f has a derivative at x equals a, if f has a derivative at x equals a, then f is continuous at x equals a. Okay, if f has a derivative at x equals a, then f is continuous at x equals a. Does the other way work? Like if you flipped it and you did the uh, converse, do you guys know converse? Yeah, shoes. Yes, shoes, you're right. The converse of the statement would be if f is continuous at x equals a, then it has a derivative. Is that true? No. No. Okay, I know lots of things that are continuous that don't have a derivative. Right? Okay? So the other way doesn't work. That's why this is not an if and only if statement. If it was if and only if, that means it goes both ways. This doesn't go both ways. It goes only one way. It says that if f has a derivative, then it's going to be continuous there. Okay? All right. That's the theorem. So let's go ahead and we're going to do some derivatives on our calculator. And this is called inderiv. And um, how many of you guys have, like, the newer calculator that does the math math print, and some of you guys have the older ones. Okay, I'll have to teach it both ways then. Okay, um, so let's do this. Number number one. Let's say that f of x is equal to two x squared plus three x. Here's our function, and we want to find f prime of 5, okay? Now, if you already know the shortcut, that's, you know, that's fine, but it's not really. Like, I'm not going to let you do that yet. We're going to do it on Monday. Um, if we were going to do this the old-fashioned way, we would take the limit as x goes to, or h goes to 0, do the whole thing, plug in 5 at the end. That would take a while, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. We could also do the alternate definition, f of x minus f of 5 over x minus 5. Okay, but right now we're going to do our, this on our calculator. Okay, so um, there's two things on your calculator. There's one thing that's uh, dy dx, that's the derivative. Okay, if you have a newer calculator, you'll see that, or you'll see this little in, in deriv thing. So go to your calculator and go to math. And scroll down, and you'll see number eight on mine. I don't know what it is on yours. Yeah? Mine says inderiv. If I hit that, I get this stuff that's interesting looking, right? Do you, who has that on their calculator? Yeah, most of you. Okay. I'm going to teach this, and then I'll teach the other one. Okay? So this is the derivative, d, d, and you have to put an x. We're taking the derivative with respect to x, and then here's where your function goes. Okay, so we're going to put in 2x squared plus 3x. 2x squared plus 3x. And this tells us where at x equals what? 5. 23. <laughs> I know, right? So this would be f prime of 5 would be 23. Okay, what does that mean, though? What does that mean? Perfect, yep. It's the slope of the tangent at x equals 5 on that graph. Okay? So you need to know that. Is the bigger number 
steeper the slope. It has a really steep slope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, you could do things that you don't know how to find the derivative of yet. Like, for example, let's say that f of x is, um, let's see, 5 natural log of x. Okay? Some of you guys, you know the shortcut rule for polynomials, but do you know the derivative of natural log? No, you don't. We're going to, though. Okay? Let's say we want to find f prime of, I don't know, 7. Okay? So you have the natural log graph. You have y equals natural log of x, 5 natural log of x, zoom 6. Here it is. At x equals 7, I have a tangent line there. Okay? I want to find the slope of that tangent line. So I go to my calculator. Oh, i got to teach it the other way, too. Um, oh, by the way, there is a shortcut for those of you who have the new DDX thing. You can hit alpha window, and it's right there, number 3, in deriv. Just so you don't have to go math and scroll all the way down or whatever. Yeah. So you can do that. So DDX, 5 natural log of x. Um, you do have to close the parentheses there, I think. And then this is at x equals 7. And so the derivative is 0.714. Okay. And if you think about a log graph, it looks like this. And then it starts to, you know, go pretty flat. So way out here at x equals 7, you're going to have a pretty low slope. It's under 1. All right, now, those of you who do not have the, the fun way, listen up real quick. I'll do it this way. Um, I'll change my mode from math print to classic. So I'm going classic on some of you. Here we go. So you classicers out there, when you hit math, um, go to math, go to end derivative, and it gives you end derivative, which is kind of a bummer. That's okay. What you're going to do is this. You're going to plug in. Um, let's do the first one. 2x squared plus 3x, comma, x, comma, 5. What you're telling your calculator to do is take the derivative of that function with respect to x at 5. Hit enter, and it'll give you 23. Okay? So those of you who have that, um, the old way to do it, so it's, I'll write that down. It's in deriv, and then it would be f of x, <clears throat> comma x, comma the value. I'll just call it a. If you're trying to find f prime of a, that's what it would be. Okay, now, the cool thing is for these, we can also graph them on our calculator. Are you ready? <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to graph. Remember how I gave you all those problems and you had to find out what, what the graphs were matching to, their derivatives, and that was really hard? But you always knew like it was one less, so if, if it's a cubic, then the derivative is going to be a parabola. If it's a parabola, the derivative is a line. It's always one less for polynomials. Um, our calculator will also graph these too. So this is what you want to do. <clears throat> Uh, in for y1, you're going to put your function, f of x. And then in for y2, you're going to do your derivative thing. Okay? Um, when you do the derivative, you'll do d dx of y1. And then with respect to x equals x. We don't want to do it at one point. We want to do it at all the points of x, okay? You don't want to plug in at x equals 3 or anything like that. You want to just do x, x, okay? So let's do one. Um, number 3. Let's say that f of x is equal to x cubed, okay? And I want to um, <clears throat> graph f prime of x. All right, so go to your calculator. Oh, and if you have the old calculator and you, your y2, your y2 would look like this. It would be in deriv, in deriv, comma, y1, comma, x, comma, x. Okay, no specific values of x. x is a variable. <laughs> All right, so go to your calculator. Let me change my mode back to math print. 
Okay, so go to Y1, <clears throat> plug in X to the third, go to Y2, choose N derivative, you're going to go DDX, and then you're going to put Y1, okay? Um, if you want to, you can put X cubed there, but Y1, you can go to bars, over to Y bars, function, and that's where you find Y1. Okay. That way you don't have to change that. You can change y1 every single time, and then it, y2 will graph the derivative of y1. So you have to keep changing it. So where's the bars at? Yeah, bars is right here. And then you go to uh, function, bars, y bars. Go to y bars, and then go to function, because we're doing functions. And this is at x equals x. All right, so we graph it, and here comes my cubic function, and then here comes the derivative and there it is, it's a parabola, okay? Um, the cool thing is, is like, let's say that, okay, so let's graph that. So here's f of x, and then uh, the derivative, the derivative isn't just a polynomial, it's not just x squared. The derivative is actually 3x squared. Um, if you wanted to, yeah, it's a stretch, mm -hmm. Or shrink. If you wanted to find the derivative at, say, 4, you could go to your calculator, hit trace, make sure that you're on y2, though, you're on the derivative, and you can plug in 4, and it'll give you 48. Or you can plug it into here to find it, too. But let's say you didn't quite know. Maybe you thought this was just a regular parabola instead of 3x squared, and I asked you to do f prime of 4, then you could just go right to the graph and do it. Oh, uh, yeah, so when you hit trace, it will always go to y1, trace y1, so you just arrow down, and now it'll be on y2. And then you can plug in whatever value you want. x is 3, x is whatever. Let's try another one, another one. Let's do, ooh, this one's going to be tough. You ready for a tough one? Number four. Let's say y <laughs> equals cosine x. And I want us to graph, I want us to graph um, y prime and tell me what the function is. What is y prime? Okay, I'll help you with this one because we haven't done any, any sines and cosines and stuff. All right, so go to um, y equals and plug in cosine x. And if you have y1 already in for y2, then you don't have to change it. You just leave it there, okay? And then you can hit graph. You can also hit zoom trig. Zoom trig would probably be better. It's slow, isn't it? Is yours slow? Yeah. yeah mine's slow, too. It has to really, th really like think about it, huh? I'm going to hit zoom trig, and now it's going to be slow. Okay, so there's my cosine graph. Do you recognize it? Cosine hits 1 at 0, just like that. And then here's my second graph. This is the derivative. Does it, still look like a sine? it does. It looks like sine because it goes through 0, 0. So let me graph these. So I have cosine um, goes like this. Okay, there's the cosine graph. My derivative, though, went um, through here, didn't it? There we go. Okay, that's pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Close enough. All right, do you know what that's the graph of? It's not sine. It's actually negative sine. Because sine goes up, right? When you go to zero, zero, you start by going up and then down. But here, it went down first. So basic sine graph starts up like this. Wow, there's a lot of graphs going on on this page. Like that. But this is negative sine of x. Okay, let's try one more. Two more, one more. Number five. Ooh, guess what? Your calculator is wrong. Let me show you. All right, let's say we have f of x equals the absolute value of x. And let's go ahead and find out what the derivative is, and let's graph it. Okay? So we'll go to y. We'll graph the absolute value of x. 
So there's our absolute value. And then here it comes. Ooh, that's cool, huh? And shouldn't that make sense? Right? We've done this before. Here's the absolute value. The derivative graph looks like this. The slope is negative 1 on that side, and then it's positive 1 on that side. Remember that? Okay, it's wrong because, well, it's not wrong. That's right. But when you hit trace and you go to y2 and you plug in 0, it tells you the answer is 0. That's wrong. Because what, what happens here? If there's a corner. Is there a derivative at 0? No. Your calculator's wrong. It tells you there is a derivative at 0. Watch, even when you do it here, when you go math uh, 8, you take the derivative of the absolute value of x at x equals 0, it will tell you the answer is 0. Your calculator fails. Isn't that crazy? Your calculator told you a wrong answer. You have to be smarter than your calculator. Okay? At x equals 0, f prime of 0 does not exist. There's no value there. Okay? It's a corner. But f prime of x, do you know what the, um, what the uh, what's it called? The formula is for that? Like, if I, if I had you on a quiz or test and I asked you to come up with the derivative for this, you could write it as a piecewise. That would be fine. So the piecewise would be negative 1 when x is less than 0 or positive 1 when x is greater than 0. That's what the derivative is. It's also um, absolute value of x divided by x. Was anyone thinking that? No? Like, no, not at all. Okay, but your calculator helps a lot.